Your battle event has been completed. Uh, free to play. And so I have the hidden lotus skin now available. Uh, there's obviously been a lot of interest in this series. Obviously people search on YouTube how to get this skin. Is it still possible for a free to play player? And the answer is yes it is. But I need to make it very clear. Uh, as I'm going to go into a bit more detail in this video of how I get this skin. That this is not an easy task. This You need to have a high level of play. Especially for progress in the fog. Especially for clearing AP. Or if you have the skill to clear your action points in an even better manner. Such as Barbarian Chaining. So let's go through the breakdown. Now if you follow my series you'll know that I've done this three times now. But this is one of the strongest times I've done it because the building power is lower than I've had before. The technology power is lower than I've had before. But commander power and troop power is higher, which is what you want. Obviously, the barbarian chainers will find getting the commander power and troop power higher no problem at all because they're generating all those extra low half prizes and the experience of killing extra barbarians. Let's have a look at commander power. What do I do to get 400,000 commander power in the first week? Let's have a look. So obviously uh, there is an element of luck to this. I have 28 commanders but I've done it with a lot less. I think uh, on my last attempt I might have only had 25 so maybe 3 less commanders. I've also had some luck that I've got the legendaries. Now let's go to the bottom here so let's just take um here we are so bjorn ironside uh, i pulled him from a key brilliant i'm not going to use him in sunset so i've spent no skill points on him but i have nine see the commander power below his below his uh picture here nine thousand three hundred commander power for getting him to level 10 with three stars so I've just spent the talent points on random things. It doesn't matter. Now let's take another epic. So here we are, this one. So slightly higher on the power because she's level 11 instead of level 10. That's part of how I've spread the power. So all of my commanders are at least 11 or 10 to try and get the easy early power. So let's just take one commander for a moment. Okay, let's do her. So let's finish this level off. So at the moment we're on 15 million, sorry, 1.5 million, 217. So when we go to level, put her up a level. Where is she? We get 100 power, oh, 150 power for putting her up one level. But then of course... So that takes us to 367. But then of course, when I now spend the talent point, you get another 300. Bang, 300. All the commanders are slightly different. For example, when you put a skill up on Joan, let's do that now, you get, I think it's 1600. Oh, 1800. But when you put a skill up on Loha, I believe it's only 800. So there are different tiers within the epic commanders. Let's have a look uh, at my main one. So my Sun Tzu is 37,800 power. Obviously, um, if you take the spread in the power on the commanders to the extreme, um, you wouldn't have your Sun Tzu so strong. The reason my Sun Tzu is so strong is because I wanted to progress the expedition. And I want to, because I want to progress my Sunset Arena team. But I, if I was taking the power spread in, I could have a higher power on my commander than the 400,000 I've got if I hadn't progressed Sun Tzu, um, Tommen, and City Keeper as much as I had. The, of course, the pass, um, the, what are they called? The Peacekeepers. Of course, they naturally progress as you're clearing a lot of AP. So that's good. So let's have a look, though. Now, I also managed to three-star all my legendaries, which is a ginormous boost, because their skill is worth, I think it's about 3,600 or, or something like that. Uh, so 
maybe a little less, but their skill, yes, no, you start with the first skill. So I think their their skills are worth about 3,200 or something like that. So it's huge to get a legendary. So this one is 14,000. Oh, well, Cleopatra, as I say, she is a lower tier than Mulan, who is 14,700 for being level 10 with three skills. So that's interesting. There is a 400,000 difference. Um, of course, now, I did fail to three-star one, two of my epics, and three of my blues. What I could have done if is I was in trouble for power is to progress them then to level 20 to force the three stars, which gives an extra eight or 900 for the skill, and then, of course, and the extra 10, but... Uh, getting to level 20 is very expensive compared to getting to level 10. There's no real secret for this. Let's say for a moment I was only on 27 commanders. Let's say I was missing Bjorn. So I'd be missing 9,300 power. What I'd simply have to do though is instead of getting everyone to 11, I'd have to get them to 12. So when I only had 26 commanders, I got a few of the blues to level 20, a few of the greens to level 20... And quite a few of the um, the epics and legendaries to level 12 or 13. Because I was having to get more power out of each commander. But I think 4,000 is a pretty good target. Obviously, if you are a barb chainer, this is the easiest power you can get. One of my fellow um, uh, Sleeper Project members has got the 1.5 million skin free to play but they're 40,000 points ahead of me in the commander power which just shows the the massive difference barbarian chaining can make in your progress in this task Uh, of course there's also the added um, points from uh, equipment so each of these is only a hundred and I forget how much a green one is might even be three or four hundred but it all adds on to the commander power uh, and also helps you progress the expedition. What you need to say to yourself, though, is how we, how important is the expedition and sunset to you? Certainly, it's one of the parts of the games that I enjoy the most because uh, I like going into uh, Sunset Canyon and uh, using my commander knowledge to, to try and beat some of the whales or certainly some of the new whales. causes me great reward. Let's have a quick look. I think I've got an example I can show you. If we go into the history here, here, this person's uh, 4 million to one of the whales. I think they're the second biggest power, but my defence held up to their their team, but their their team wasn't really a proper team. Of course, it was really just uh, one superstar and four marches that aren't even nearly ready, but it still makes me chuckle and it gives me the chance of an extra gold key early for no work at all. Let's now go and have a look what's left. Is there anything else really I can talk about commanders? Obviously, you've got to keep them busy. Obviously, you've got to clear your AP. Um, but to get the commanders this high, I have cleared some of my AP. How much have I got left after getting the the 1.5 million? I have only 3,500. But... I say I just had to do what I had to do, uh, and I'd rather have progressed the commander power than than uh, force the uh, the buildings higher than they are. In fact, I've got quite a lot of this left, so I can progress my sunset team as I speak. I'm currently working on this one, although I should work on this one. I don't really want him though, so I'm going to work on this one a little more. Let's just move her one skill ahead whilst I'm here. So that's 35. And what are we working on? We want another 3% when you're below 50% power. So that's good and done. Now there's not much else to talk about the commanders. It's pretty simple. You're just spreading the power. Uh, There's no real... I say what you need to do though is also react to how much luck you are having with the gold keys. Uh, I mean, if you're having an absolute terrible time with the gold keys, it's going to become really difficult and you you will have to start chaining. Uh, I can't chain. I don't really know how to. But what I sometimes do is I 
summon all the barbarians like this and then when I summon my level uh, 12 uh, I can then try and push him onto the one or if you're lucky or if you've summoned all 12 there'll be one close to it and then you're just double counting your 30 AP you're getting at least one extra kill it makes a big difference let's move on to the next one so troop power two hundred and ninety thousand power how did i get there well of course clearing the ap was a major part of getting there the other part is really it's like having a baby as i say this is not for people for people who do not play a high volume during the day uh, when i'm getting the 1.5 million you have to play a lot for example my siege workshop only has a two hour queue i think let's just finish this so my siege workshop has uh yeah only a two hour queue so really i've been having to log in at least every two hours to keep my troops training the other thing that's really important to understand is wait so let's demonstrate it here so the key to getting really high power on the on the infantry sorry not the infantry on your troops is to understand this the more tier one you train the higher your troop power will be that's because the more reward you will get for example when you get to 10,000 troops you get a reward when you get to 20,000 troops you get a reward and some of these rewards might only be four hours in speed ups or four hours in speed ups is 1,200 in troops so let's have a look to train six where we are so let's just type in six so to train six tier one will give you six power and takes one minute and 12 seconds okay here we go to tier two to train six tier two it would take you two minutes 24 so exactly twice as much so it doesn't really matter if you do tier one or two or two I often do tier two because I want to progress my expedi expedition. Um, but if I was really trying to desperately spread power, I would only do tier one. But then I have to log in even more. I'd have to log in every hour to make sure that my training troops, uh, my troops are still training. Um, but now that's this is the important one to understand. You don't want to move onto your tier. You don't want to move onto your tier. What are they called? Tier threes because if we see here so tick six tier threes give um 18 power where six tier twos give uh 12 power so it's twice the time to do your tier threes than it is to do your tier twos but only 50 percent more power so you only want to do your tier threes at night so when I went to bed last night, I set my tier threes for a seven hour queue. This is really important. Uh, I've been wanting to do my tier threes so because I want to progress my expedition, but I do not want to spend my speed ups on my tier threes or train them during the day when I'm able to log on every couple of hours. This is really important than the crux. Also, the higher level troops you do, you're getting less of the tier rewards for example for getting 10,000 20,000 30,000 40,000 like I said um, so if you're struggling if you're worried you do as many tier one as you can but you need to be able to log in to do them tier three are less effective you want to do tier one or tier two uh, of course barbarian chaining will give you tons and tons of um, let's just have a look one minute and five minute speed ups there's three one minute speed ups there's three one minute speed ups so the more ap you spend the more troops you will have the more progress you will have in expedition now let's just talk about expedition which also ties into the commander power you should not buy ethelfled from the shop from here you want to get her from the two bonus stages but to do this, you need some skill. You need some understanding of how the commander's working because this is not easy in itself. But 
I say, once you've got your army to 200 and over 200,000 power, um, getting these shouldn't be a problem. But keep in the back of your mind that you also need the castle and at least level 10 on your watchtowers, the three star, the two bonus levels. Get Ethelved for free just by getting one star, and that will boost your what's it called? That will boost your commander power by where are we? That will boost your commander power by you know, well, 16,000 here, but I've got it to level 13, so she's a real boost to get Ethelved uh, for free from the expedition. Let's just have a quick look at this picture. So I just want to show, before I went to bed last night, so I was logging off for seven hours. It was midnight when I took this picture. And my, I had two buildings at seven hour, seven hour, and I had uh, research at eight hours. And then you see I've just refreshed. I did the tier threes for seven hours. Uh, then as much of the tier twos as I could for these ones. So this was the most effective um setup i could have for going to bed of course i then sent out all my gatherers um but i say i'll talk a bit more about this on buildings but this is just an idea of how i log off when i go to sleep look at a save so i am doing the tier threes but only because i'm in bed it's less effective unless you know you're not going to log in so that's all i have to say about troops at the moment i can't think of much else Obviously, do not spend a speed up that is not a training speed up on troops. So, troops are about, for every one hour training speed up you have, should be about 300 power. Where you get uh, a better return on some other buildings. Um, oh, okay. The other important thing with uh, troops is, of course, you, uh, you need to get your barracks to 16 to get to the City Hall 17. And you must never ever not have the speed ups to get your barracks to start your barracks building and then have to wait for it you should always have the speed ups before you start a training building otherwise for example on the la on the level 16 barracks if i didn't have the speed ups it would be 24 hours doing no training which is um 3000 6000 i don't know 7200 odd thousand power that I would lose by not having the speed ups to progress the barracks immediately. Same goes for the research academy here. Let's have a look at the next power thing we're doing. Hold on. Let's have a look with 1507. So technology is pretty straightforward. The main key thing you need to understand though is when you're progressing it, that you progress the combat because you need the level twos for overnight at the start so you do the swordsman to progress the main quest line but the bowman and light cavalry and archery here and the siege is an opportunity it's one of the only early researches that can go overnight so you want to set it before you go to bed later on it's not a problem ever look bucklers uh, level four to five it will do overnight no problem at all but when you first start a lot of the researches are two three and four hours and what you don't want to be is going to bed for seven hours and not have your research queue full so you've got to think about using the C the level two tier troop training to be an overnight research now another important thing to understand is economy is a better return on our power per hour uh, for example, look, tw the last one of Wheel is 10,000 power for, I think, about 12 hours or something, which is 10,000 for 12 hours is pretty good. Um, so have a look what I've got here. Everything's done right up to uh, 3, 2 on Plow and Sawmill. So all economic done. And I have actually done two of the Tier 3s. Now, doing the Tier 3s is brilliant because one of the rewards you get is a 1,000 Tier 3s which is another way to boost your um, troop power by 3,000 points, which is ginormous. So not only do you get 27,000 points power for doing the research, you get another 3,000 for then um, for uh, for the, what's it called, your principal quest line. You get another 1,000 troops, which is worth 3,000 power. Let's just move on to buildings quickly. So... 
Uh, the main thing about buildings is just keeping the cues going. Like I showed that picture, when I went to bed, I knew that I could, uh, that they would be busy whilst I was asleep. You should always have one of these to hand, which is what's needed next. Now, the there's no real secret. People have asked me for a step-by-step, -step, but I just follow this. But let's just look at level um, 12 for a moment. Let's say I've finished my storehouse and I'm waiting for the wall to finish. Of course, I'll start upgrading my lumber mill. I know this order. I don't actually need this email. It's just to be effective that you're... Just follow this until you are level uh, uh, City Hall 16 and opens your barracks. There's nothing more complicated than that to follow. One other thing, though, I would say is I would deviate from that. Is do you see you need your Alliance uh, Center 13 up until level 14? I would always progress my Alliance Center immediately after my City Hall was finished. I would also always progress my Academy. Uh, uh, at least up to level 16 immediately after my city hall is finished that's because there's a real important bonus on the academy which some people miss which is the research bonus here it's up to eight percent now also don't forget early um, that on your research this can be a nuisance you have to push the map because everything on this first page here is possible to get via the uh via the scouting which of course you need that masonry 15 percent really important and don't forget to concentrate on your writing that's really important as soon as you have got your the opens up the level of academy where you're able to do that it really helps with the speed ups now so other than that uh again i've already spoken about the the four buildings here in the academy must always be done with speed ups you should never ever run out of speed ups or be in a position where you need to upgrade your academy or one of your barracks stables siege workshop or archery range without the speed ups to do it Im immediately this is just a major core skill uh, i don't really know how to give the words that uh with it's just experience that you've got to need to know what's coming up next so if you know archery range is next, you know you need to start saving speed ups. Otherwise, I say you might get into the situation where you are waiting for. Um, no, there we are, level ten stable stables. You need to know that you've got the speed ups to do them immediately, or you are really being ineffective. Let's have another look now. Obviously, you have to wait for your helps before you can finish up, but that's that. Anything else on building? so building there we are i don't think there's much else i can talk about on building what i would say though is the next key thing to understand is the courier station uh, i've run out of gems but i did share my last video where i refreshed the courier station one time also um this was surprised some people i also buy the silver keys from the courier station because i'm desperate that every time you get 10 green heads it progresses 500 power on one of these skills and yes they're no use in the long term but it's a way of power spreading um let's have a think now i don't think oh yes so obviously the building that's the best return is the is the hospitals and the gold mines the hospitals being the key one there so i'm 17 15 15 and 15 which is a huge amount of power so that's 20 40 60 uh that's a hundred thousand power just in hospitals uh but remember you don't start doing that until you've at least progressed to 16 i have in fact progressed to 17 because you have an option depending how well you're doing you have a seven day speed up which you can use to progress the city hall 16 to 17 immediately but spending it is a long-term damage to your account but i decided to do it because i was getting a bit tight and i wanted to concentrate on sunset canyon right i hope this video really helps somebody i've gone in a bit more detail than i usually do if you want i don't know if i can break it down much more but let's collect this now and that's all for today thanks for joining me in this journey and thanks for all those that are subscribing liking and commenting have a good day